The coronavirus and viruses like it are everywhere, on every surface, and you gotta take care and protect yourself and your family. People are using paper towels, and that's just not good for the environment. It's not a long-term solution. These are, these are simple to make, probably under a dollar if you make four or five at a time, one for everyone in your family, to open and close doors, elevators, any kind of situation where there's a contact surface. Door handles, both opening and closing. Knobs of all kinds. Handles of all types, especially in break rooms, which are famous for all sorts of contaminants. I verified this design in literally hundreds of doors, apartment entries, elevators, heavy office doors and locks, and they worked great. I'll show you how to make these quickly, easily, with supplies that are readily available from any home store and even a Walmart. Interested? Here we go. Here are my most successful prototypes. And if this thing looks like nunchucks, that's not a coincidence. That's what I used to design it. 95 pound paracord. I used two feet worth. This is just that green coated wire to hang and dry clothes outside. And this is about 15 inches worth. In general, it worked really well, except for some really big handles. If you look at how wide that is, it's right around two and a quarter. So I think if I can get it out to two and a half, that extra space will make all the difference in the world. On big heavy doors, and I'm talking about doors that are 10 feet tall, like at hotels and large office buildings, sometimes you lost a purchase, when, and part of it was because you're trying to hold on to it like this. You can hold on it like this, and that will get it through easily. But it felt like it was sliding my hand. So I have an idea where I'm gonna just take another piece of three quarter inch PEX pipe and just make a little knob here at the end to help make it easier to hold on to. And my next version will be a little longer, five and a half inches, which is kind of interesting because I started looking at this and comparing it to pens and pencils, and guess what? It's somewhere around the length of a pen or a pencil. So even if you don't have a ruler, the next version is gonna be the size of a pen or pencil. And that's what you can use as your guide. Just to give it a little more extra room and a little more to hold on to. Now this one, 15 inches, you can push the door with it fairly well. And these knobs really made it easy to hold on to. Open doors, close doors. But I'm thinking, if I use nylon hose, in this case, it's 14 inch outer diameter, 0.170 inch inner diameter. Isn't that funny? You got a fraction here and you got a decimal there. And I'm looking at about an inch and a half worth. I think that might help keep it. So it would be nice if it could spring out a little bit. And so that's what I think that hose is gonna do for me. So that way you can just wrap it around a door. Again, you don't have to touch the doors with this one or this one push in knobs, and you saw a good bit of those demonstrated in the video before. If you've seen my videos before, you know I use acetone now to clean off the lettering off of pipe. I used to sand it off and it would just leave a rough, unfinished edge, but this acetone cleans up really well. So just take a paper towel, open this up, I wear gloves in a well-ventilated area, pour on a good bit of acetone, put your pipe on there like that, and you can see how quickly it works. And that's all the lettering that used to be on there. Or this distance right here was at the half inch point in and then the inch and a quarter in. So that's where I drilled the two holes. If I'm gonna bury a bigger knot, I'm a little concerned that that's not gonna be good enough. So I'm probably going to, we'll try three quarter inch in and inch and a half. Get up here, I'm gonna to try to make a straight line and I'm gonna mark it with this center punch. Tells you right where to put your drill bit. And once you got a little divot like that, you can pump it a bunch of times to make it deeper. I'm gonna do it at an inch and a half because I want this distance right here. All right, I think it's right there. All right, now you could do both sides, but I just found it's easier just to do one and try as best as you can to drill the hole 
And then I'm going to repeat that on the second one. And I can actually use this guy as a guide now because I want him to be symmetrical on both sides. That's one. And those will be my drill points. Hopefully you can see those little divots there. You could certainly do this all in blue. I kind of like this contrast between the blue and the red. So I'm using 325 paracord. I think I'm going to start with 16 inches. It's 18 inches of paracord. Got these jet flame things for, I'll tell you what, those are great for melting. And I want to make the knob as small as possible because I'm going to be feeding it through a hole. All right, and then I always finish the other end from the line that I cut so that it doesn't fray and it's ready to go next time I use it. So this is a 3 16th drill bit. Let's see if that works. Yeah, I think that's going to just let the paracord, the 325 paracord slide right through. And I like this little nub here. You can see it, which will line right up against the divot I just made. Make it easier to drill. Holes are made. You'll have little pieces of plastic filing in there and I just take a dowel, push down on that to clear those out. I also have a cheap set of these really micro files, all to be used to clean those holes out a little bit. So you take your first tube, push the paracord through, feed it to the other side. If for some reason it's being a little cantankerous, I made this little tool out of paper clip and you can just use it as a hook. Put the needle through like that. Come on now. Feed it through like this on both sides. Use some pliers or just a long screwdriver and just push it through that way. So this is a little trickier because you have to feed it through in the opposite direction. It's almost like cooking and fishing. And I just put the hook in there like that and then hopefully it will come right through. Come on, there you go. Push it through this hole to the other side. Pull that guy through again. Up through the last piece. Now you can give yourself a little bit more paracord to work with here. It makes it a little easier. All right, so this guy's three inches on that side. I'm gonna tie a square knot and get that as close to three inches as possible. I'm gonna trim off this side and this side. All right, now I'm just gonna pull that knot down in there like that all the way to the wall inside where this hole is. I'm going to pull it back over here and that's the fixed distance, right? So I just got to, I'm going to even it out on both sides like that. And that's 325 times 2, 650 pounds worth of strength right there. I used the pipe cutter to cut the section and now I'm just going to take the pipe cutter and just it's the best way to get a nice straight cut. That's pretty good. To get a gap of that much just you can see it's really small probably no more than a millimeter or two and you want to make it as straight as possible. I used a combination of a straight edge, the bigger file and the little file to get that guy right down where he needed to be. And now it's nice and flush. You could probably use electrical tape and do the same thing. I just wanted to give it a nice stop when you're opening up or pushing in those really big doors. For this next step, I have two six inch cable ties ready to go. They fit right around there like this. I've got my rapid fuse, doesn't take much. And then take, get the end, put in position. You got about 30 seconds to work with these guys. Cinch it down. There you go, both are glued up. So I'll let that dry for an hour or so. Pop off the cable ties. Make sure you don't glue them on there. 
And then this guy's ready to go out in the wild and battle the virus. We can see that this one's just a tad bit longer than five and a half, more leaning towards six. So basically six inches, six inches, and then a little bit of wrap around there. That's why I came up with a 15 inch piece of wire. I think you can see it right there. It's a very faint black line. Now I could also bend it in the middle, which I may do, or give it a little bit of a curve. There we go. You take a pair of needle nose pliers and you can see that I've actually covered the edges with painter's tape to help prevent any marking. And I'm just gonna take it right around a half inch, quarter inch. I'm gonna rotate that in once and then rotate it in one more time. And that just gives me a handle. Okay, let's see measurement there. Okay, it's right at five and a half inches. And I'll do the same thing here. Try to make the same size. Rotate it once. In. You can push down on it like this if you want. Like that. And then rotate it one more time to make a handle. And I wanted to get a little bit more springy action. That's why I added the one and a half inch sleeve, vinyl tubing, whatever, to give it a little bit more spring to make it easier to put around the doors. I came up with this design when I saw people around the office using paper towels on every surface that they touched. There were two women in an elevator that were complaining they'd have to touch the buttons and how those were contaminated. And we just don't want to use all those paper towels to try to protect ourselves when you got something easy like this that can solve the problem for you. Easy to make within minutes and you've got something solid that's going to last you a long time. Fits easily in your pocket. You can't go wrong. Thumbs up and comments always appreciated. Thanks for watching. I hope this design works for you. If it did, please send me a comment. If you have better ideas, give me those too and share them with the rest of the group. I post videos at least once a week on all sorts of different topics. I make a lot of things, I break a lot of things, I test a lot of things. If you're interested, please subscribe.